personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance calculation tools part number two. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. We started this worksheet in a prior presentation, so you could go back there and work the first part of it, but it's actually not required to move forward from this point. If you do have access to the sheet, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, and answer key. We've got the information on the left-hand side. We're looking at tools we could use to customize our life insurance needs types of calculations, noting that as we've seen in prior presentations, you can approach the question of how much life insurance do we need from many different angles and you can try to customize or use these tools to customize your individual calculation. So the second tab, the practice tab, has some pre-formatted worksheets so you can work through the practice problem uh, without as much Excel formatting. The third tab then is gonna be where we're gonna work it from a blank sheet. Quick recap of what we saw in the prior presentation when we're thinking about the life insurance calculation, the first thing we would most likely think of is is someone dependent on me for my wages? If they are and I was to die, how much would they need on a yearly basis to support them for how many years? And then what's the lump sum that they would need at the time of my death in order to accommodate those needs? Now, again, we can get to that baseline number a few different ways. We might just use our wages, for example, or we might use an expense calculation. We try to think about the cash outflows as how much they would need on a yearly basis. Once we have that number, we multiplied it by 10, which is kind of a heuristic type of number in the prior presentation. We could use the number of years till we're in retirement. We could use the child until the child reaches 18, until the spouse is in retirement in order to get that year's number. Uh, so there's multiple kind of ways we can think about it. And then we can tack on other things after those earning years that we would typically have if we were alive, such as saving for things like the college tuition, for example, or spouse's retirement or something like that. So then we came out to the insurance needed of the 600,000 with the generic 10. And so that could be a number that we could use right there. Or we might say, I'm gonna take some percentage of it heuristically, 70%, for example, to get down to the 420, which you might reason that the 60,000, for example, may not be something that they really need that's possibly covering the needs and over above uh, the needs at that point. And you're not gonna be there, of course, so you're gonna have less costs for your yourself within the expenses side of things. And this 420,000, if they were to invest it, if they got a lump sum of it, you would also have earnings so that, uh, so that they can support themselves with the earnings that they would get on the investment as well. So that's kind of a heuristic approach that we could use. And then we talked about another thing we might say, well, what if I want them to be able to get 60,000 uh, on top of, on just the earnings of the proceeds that they would have from the life insurance. So we said, well, if they were to have 1,200,000 at a 5% return, they could get 60,000 a year and still have the principal. So that would of course be a much higher level of life insurance and then you'd have the principal. So that's another way you could think about it. We also said, okay, well, wait, we thought about this idea over here where the 420 could actually earn some money. And so they would be only drawing out the 60,000 each year. So we said, okay, well, what if we thought about a stream of annuity payments? How much would they need invested to have a stream of annuity payments to pull out 60,000 uh, each year? And we could do a present value calculation, which we did last time based on earnings of 5%. And so that would mean that they would need this 463, 304 in order to get an annuity stream of 60,000 out each year if they were able to earn the 5% on it. That also allows us to possibly look at term insurance that might have a decreasing factor to it because as we get closer to that retirement age, there would really be less of that cash flow need that they would might have. And then we can tack onto it retirement savings calculations, for example, or college tuition calculations and so on, so that you might be able to look at term insurance that has a decreases over time. Now let's get, we can get a little bit more detailed on that calculation, just to add a little bit more complexity. We might say, well, yeah, but there, if 60,000 we determine is their expense needs in the current year, 
We also have to deal with inflation. So because that means that in order to have the same spending in the future year, there would be inflation involved. So we might say, okay, well, how can I take into consideration the inflation component? That's what we'll take a look at now. So let's do a skinny, let's make this skinny M over here. I'm gonna take that skinny M and format paint it. I'm gonna make a skinny U, skinny U. This is gonna, pre, pre, we're gonna do a present value calculation again, present value. I'll make this a little bit larger. And then I'm gonna say, let's bring in our rates. We're gonna have the estimated rate uh, or the earnings rate is still gonna be the 5%. But then I also want the inflation rate. So I'm gonna say inflation rate is gonna equal, and I have this in my, my information on the, on the left. Inflation rate is gonna be this one, the 3%. So 3% inflation. Inflation, you would typically calculate anywhere between like two, you know, two and 5% really. And usually historically the, the Fed wants it, you know, be under 2% really, but uh, it looks like it's gonna get higher possibly at this point in time. So you might calculate a higher inflation than that, right? So in any case, it depends on the time frame. So you might just try, we're trying to do an average rate of inflation, which we would think three would be, you would think high over the long run. But in any case, I'll subtract out the two of them. We got three minus five. So that means the real rate of return would be the, the 2% if that was the case, right? Because we're gonna be losing earning potential on the 60,000 that they pull out because of inflation, the decline in the value of the dollar. So if I earn 5%, but three of it's eaten up by inflation, I'm really er only earning in real terms the 2%. So this would be a more conservative kind of calculation. So let's, let's widen this up again, because I gotta do, I'll do the calculation up top. So based on that information, we're gonna do a present value annuity stream, but this time instead of basing it on the 5%, we're gonna base it on the real rate of the 2%. So I'm gonna say negative present value, shift nine, the rate is gonna be the 2%, the real rate, comma, and then the number of periods. Let's actually add a little bit more data down here. Let's say the periods, periods, I'm gonna say this equals, scroll all the way to the left, it's gonna be 10. And then we're gonna say that this will be the payments are gonna come out are 60,000. So there's our data, there's our data. Okay, so now let's make this, put some borders around it. Let's make it borders and blue, borders and blue. If you don't have that blue, it's down here. Standard, we'll make it that blue. And then this one will make it border blue. That's, that's not right, that's, that's white. And then this one, let's make it black and white because we did that last time, black and white. Okay, so now we'll see, let's do our annuity payment. If they were to take out 60,000 each year, but at the real rate of return, and we'll see how this kind of plays out when we'll, we'll expand the calculation of 2%, what would that look like? So I'm gonna do negative instead of equals, present value, so it turns out to be a positive number, which probably isn't the most proper way to do it, but I think it's the fastest. The rate is gonna be the 2%, comma. The number of periods now is going to be 10 years, comma. And then the payment that we're gonna make is gonna be the 60,000, and enter. So now we're at the 538955 instead of the 463, right? So it's a more conservative kind of calculation based on the 2%. Now, how does that actually work? Because I did an annuity based on 60,000 at 2%. Like what is actually going on here? Let's try to, let's try to uh, figure this out in a little bit more depth. I'm gonna make this blue and borders. I'm gonna make a skinny X here. I'm gonna put my U here. I'm gonna go to the format painter and put that on the X. And let's first do the same kind of thing we did uh, over here where we did this calculation uh, right here. So I'll basically copy the headers. Let's copy the headers. So we've got year earnings payment balance and the year is going to be zero, one, two. And then we'll select those three, select the fill handle and drag it down to 10. Let's center it alignment and center. We'll make column Y a bit skinnier thinning up column number Y, the payment on the outside is gonna be equal to 
the 538.955, 538.955, and then I'm gonna do the earnings the same way here. I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to the 538.955 times, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just use the two percent. Really, the earnings are gonna be five percent, right? So I'll switch it up in a second. But let's just do it the same way we did it before, so we can see what's going on in a similar fashion with this calculation. So let's say it was 2% earnings, and then this is in cell W5. So I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, because I don't want that to move down. That's an absolute reference. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works, and enter. And then the payment is going to be, I'm just gonna keep it at the 60,000. I'm gonna say negative 60,000 F4, because I don't want that one to move down. Now remember, the outflow, once they start taking the money out, you're gonna say, but yeah, but it needs to go up by because there's gonna be inflation. They're gonna need more than 60,000 each year. So we'll think about that in the following calculation. Let's just do this one the same way first. So I'm gonna say enter. And this equals the prior one plus the SUM of these items and close up the brackets and enter. So it's gonna be this plus this minus this the prior balance plus the earnings that they're making on it minus the payment. Let's select those three, copy it down with a fill handle, and you can see that gets us down to that nice zero down below. So given that, now we're gonna alter it and say, well, yeah, but the earnings should be 5%, and then the payments need to go up by 3%. So we won't get exact, it won't be exact doing it this way, but we'll get another we'll get an idea of what actually we're trying to do here. Let's take a, let's make this blue and bordered first. Blue and bordered. So now I'm going to copy this whole thing. Let's copy from column X and drag on over to column AB. I'm going to say control C and I'm going to put that in AC1 and control V. So now let's let's just let's delete the data. And let's do it again and let's say, okay, well, the balance is actually going to be the 538,955. And then I'm going to say the earnings are going to be at the 5%. We're going to say the earnings are at the 5%, inflation's at the 3%. So earnings will actually be the 538,955 times the 5%. I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard because when I copy that down, I don't want it to move down. We only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. And then the payments are gonna be, if it's a year out, you know, so I, I started a year later, if it was currently 60,000 that I'm having, then a year later, it's gonna to have to increase by that 30%. So this is gonna be equal to, we could say the 60,000, 60,000 times, and we could say the, out one plus three percent or a hundred and three percent that's one way we can think about it to get us to that 61 8. the other way that we could do it to kind of be able to copy this down a little bit more easily would say i want to take the future value one year out i'm going to take a future value one year out at that three percent so let's try it that way i'm going to say negative future value brackets the rate is gonna be the 3%, and I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard because I wanna copy that down and not move that cell down, comma. Number of periods is gonna be one, which I'm gonna pick up right here so that when I copy that down, it will move down, comma. It's not a payment because we don't want an annuity this time. We just want the value of one. So therefore two commas to get us over to the present value, and then we're gonna be picking up that 60,000 this 60,000 being outside of our data. Therefore, I don't want it to move it down. F4 on the keyboard to put a dollar sign before the W and the eight brackets. And so there we have it. And I could make it negative to match this. So I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna get rid of that negative sign. Get rid of the negative sign. So it's now a negative. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna say this equals the prior balance plus the sum of these two, the sum meaning the 26,948 minus the 61,800. So 538,955 plus 26,948 minus 61,800, close up the brackets, gets us to the 504,103. Uh, so, so this is the actual amount that we would think about kind of in future value terms uh, when, we're, when we're considering it this way. So this calculation would kind of be necessary 
for us to figure how much would be there like as the years go by so, uh, so that we can have our possibly a declining amount of the life insurance. So let's select these three and let's copy it down then using my autofill, copy that down. So there we have it. Notice it doesn't get to it perfectly here. And that's why, so it's, it's, not as, it's not as neat that way, but we can see between years nine and 10 that basically it goes negative. So if we've got, the, if we've got this amount, we're gonna say the earnings on it are gonna be the 26,948. But now we're not gonna be paying out 60,000 because we, we wanna pay out the enough amount to cover the same expenses that were 60,000 before, right? So now they're gonna have to pull out in future value terms, the 61,800. Uh, and so that means that in future value terms, we're now at the 504, uh, 3, And if, if they pull out the, the same, uh, the amount we earn on that at 5%, 25,205, and now they're pulling out not 60,000, not 61,8, but in order to meet the same needs because of inflation, 63,654. And that brings us to our new balance here and so on and so forth. Let's try now to think about doing this one more way to practice our present value calculations and maybe clarify this a little bit more. So I'm gonna select this skinny column. I'm gonna make another skinny column in AH. I'm gonna select this one, grab this, grab the, the uh, paintbrush and paintbrush AH. And so then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this one years. And then we're gonna say, this is the payments. And then I'm gonna call this the, the insurance. So what I'm trying to do now is calculate the insurance needs in insur insurance, insurance. I'm gonna to try to calculate the insurance needs based on each year into the future so we can see that declining balance. I'm looking to get to basically these same numbers here in a little bit different formatting. All right, so let's select these three. Let's make this uh, our header, font group, black and white. Let's center it, center it with the alignment. I'm going to make AI a little bit thinner, skinny up AI. And so this is going to be from 0, 1, 2. I'm going to select those three, grab the fill handle, drag it down to 10, and then go to the alignment and center it. So now I want to think about the payments. And again, I want the payments to be increasing so that we can see them, uh, what the payments need to be in the next period. Let's do it the other way this time. So this time we did it with the future value calculation you might see it this way you might say well a year from now we're going to need a payment which is going to be the sixty thousand in year zero times an increase of the three percent which i'm going to say brackets and do it this way one plus the three percent close the brackets you could see it basically up here so w8 times one plus the w4 you could see it here w8 times one plus the w4 that's going to give us our 61,000. then in the next year it's going to be equal to the prior period the 61.8 times times brackets one we have to have the brackets because of the because of the order of the numbers so one plus the three percent or 103 percent or an increase of three percent so 103 percent and and enter so that increased, you can see here, uh, one plus three percent. Now this this number right here is outside of our table and I want it to stay the same when I copy it down. So I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the W and the four, enter. And so now we've got the same kind of numbers we have over here. I'm gonna just copy that down. So this is the amounts that we're thinking has to be paid out if we want the cash flow to be having the same purchasing power to the person that's pulling out the cash. So then we're going to say that the life insurance started uh, in year zero at the 60,000. Let's just put the 60,000 starting point here, 60,000. So how much insurance is needed at the beginning? We'll do our present value calculation, negative present value brackets. The rate we're going to use is going to be the same, the real rate, the real rate. And so I'm going to say that's the 5% minus the 3%. And then I'll say F4 on the keyboard because I want to copy that down, comma, the number of periods. We'll do this in our tricky fashion, saying 10 minus the 0, which comes out to 10. 
but then I don't want this 10 to move down to so that one in AI 12. I'm going to put my cursor in it, say F4, the dollar sign before the AI dollar sign before the 12. And then I'm going to say comma, the payment. When I'm at zero, it's going to be that 60,000 because that, that real rate of return will accommodate that as we go down. And then enter. So we get to that same 538. Now it gets a little tricky. I could copy it down, but let's calculate it a couple more times. Negative present value brackets. The rate is going to be once again, the real rate of 2% F4 on the keyboard. So I can copy it down comma number of periods is now going to be the 10 minus the one 10 F4 because I don't want that to move down minus the one, which is nine, nine periods comma but then the payment, if I'm in year one, I can't start at the 60,000. I have to look at the annuity of the 61,800 using that increase from that point in time. That's why it's a little bit tricky. And so I'm going to say, okay, and that gives us, that's what gives us that 5043103. Let's do it again. I could say negative present value, shift nine rate. We'll do it one more time here, then we'll copy it down. The real rate, F4 on the keyboard comma number of periods is going to be now I'm going to say the 10 F4 minus the two, which would be eight, of course, comma, and then the payment now is I got to start at the 63. So if it's three years out, it needs to be the 63 654, which I imagine then uh, increasing for the remaining eight years, right? That's where it gets a little tricky. And then I can copy that down. If I copy that down, just double click in the fill handle. It should copy down properly. And you can see we've got a, a similar calculation here. Not quite exactly the same because again, this one gets a little skewed because of the earnings and the payout. So this one's probably a little bit more exact, but this minus this, you could see scrolling down. So it's, you, you know, pretty close to this calculation again, because we're breaking it out a little bit this way, rather than using the the uh, real rate you get a little bit of a, a difference there but that's the idea so then i can so then i can say okay let's make this this border and blue and also just be careful on what you're talking about with this 10 so you can say like at the end of 10 years you know we won't need anything right so we could say okay at the starting point we'd need the 538 955 and then you might say, well, then I might want an insurance policy that decreases at least with this component of it as as the time passes, because my life, my the years till the kid reaches 18 or the years till my life of work life would be over, would be there anyways, or the year till my spouse is in retirement. And then we can add on top of this possibly other things we might be aiming for, like targeted goals like tuition for school or retirement help for the spouse or something like that on top. So that's what we'll talk about uh, next time. Once we get this baseline down, which we can then kind of possibly taper as as we might need it over over our earning years or whatever calculation we're going to do, then we can start to think, how could I add on top of it specific goals that might be there if I, if I was to die like college or like insurance, like life, like a retirement help or something.